Hey, if you went to Kentucky two years in a row and never killed a big buck, would you go back? I know I would. I mean, heck, even Jackie Bushman hunts there. He's the buck master, master of all deer. You subscribe to his magazine, it'll give you, it'll give you a pocket knife. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> That's right, this week I'm heading to a state where to be governor, you have to swear under oath that you've never been involved in a duel with deadly weapons. Where's the fun in that? I would want my governors to be able to say, hey, I, I dueled a man to the death one time with a pitchfork and an ax handle. Last week we were in the great state of Wyoming, which some people consider heaven on earth. This week, we're actually going to heaven, Whitetail Heaven, which I'm not really sure why they named the God Service Whitetail Heaven. It either is because it's a, a heavenly place to hunt, or it's where big whitetail bucks go to die. Their statistics speak for themselves. They have killed a tremendous amount of whitetail bucks at Whitetail Heaven, and we're looking forward to going back there, man. I gotta get this monkey off my back. This, Two years of bad luck, and I gotta kill a whitetail buck. I gotta get it done. Really, if you tally it up, this is our third year going to Whitetail Heaven, and in no way have we ever been disappointed in the past. I've shot a few things at Whitetail Heaven. I center punch the sucker and he runs out to about 37 yards and then he stops and he's holding one foot up just kind of looking around so I put another one in him. You know I get sick of all this, oh it's a good shot he's going down. Is he standing up? Can you still see him? And do you have any more ammunition left? That's the only three things you need to have on your checklist at that time, not do I need to shoot him again? Of course you need to shoot him again. You shoot the target until it is compliant. That's the rule. The deer didn't really cooperate today. Had two yearlings come out in the morning and uh, this was just a stand that somewhere easy to get out of the rain. Hey, look, for that arrow hitter, the only thing she's got to worry about is freezer burn. That doe ran out of Beanfield like she's trying to win the Triple Crown here in Kentucky. <laughs> I smoked her too, man. I saw blood just spewing out of her front shoulder on the exit side. Through bad circumstances, bad weather, or just plain bad luck, for some reason I have yet to get within bow range of a big trophy whitetail buck at Whitetail Heaven. But third time's a charm, and this year is my year. I'm killing something. Hey, if a spike walks out on the last day, done. I didn't even see you coming. Oh, What's up, baby? Good to see you, bro. Good to see you. About time just Why running a day late. Huh? Right, he's always right on time for dinner. Right. <laughs> my priorities, son. My priorities. You know that. Whitetail Heaven has over 40,000 acres of amazing hunting ground. In fact, the state record was killed right up the road from where Whitetail Heaven's Lodge sits. Not only does Whitetail Heaven have phenomenal hunting ground, they've got some of the best accommodations that you've ever heard of. They've got a 5,500 square foot lodge. They've got prime time hunting ground right out the back door. They've got other options. They've got backup plans for their backup plans. They've got trail cameras for days, and they're really good people. Tevis and Hannah, take care of you when you go out there. Yeah, you killer, I'm, by I'm the way. Now, Congratulations, I know, <laughs> I know that. Tevis' wife Hannah, who prepares all the meals there at Whitetail Heaven, has been awarded as one of the best caterers in all the country. So there's no way to go wrong at Whitetail Heaven. They kill giant bucks there every year, but guess what? It's 100% fair chase, so it's still hunting. You're gonna go there, you're gonna hunt hard, you might get lucky enough to get a shot at a big buck, and I'm hoping that's exactly what's going to happen to us this year. After all, the, after, after all these years, <laughs> all, these, all these years I've been drinking, I've about made it. I've made it to the top. <laughs> you don't want to get behind me. I feel you on that one, son. I have the same. I, I have the same feeling by myself. Nobody wants to be behind me after I've gone through a buffet line. 
One thing I wasn't aware of when I got there, I was thinking we were going to bow hunt, and Tevis tells me that that weekend is Kentucky muzzleloader season. So now I need to find somebody to bum a muzzleloader from. What you think of him? Muzzle loader now. Well, we just got in the blind a little while ago. It's an opening day muzzle loader here in Kentucky. We're sitting at a really good spot right near the lodge. There's a couple of does already right down here in the bottom. So day one, we're set up in a box blind. I'm not a huge box blind fan. I like to be out in the open or in some real camouflage or up in a tree or something like that. But hey, when in Rome, when during gun season. So we're up in this box blind. I got a muzzleloader that I've never shot before and a couple deer are starting to come out. And then out walks this pretty decent buck. There's a deer right there coming in. It's a buck, it's a good buck, good buck. And now, you gotta understand, pretty decent is real good because in Kentucky, if you will recall, for the last two years, I have goose egged on any kind of a buck whatsoever. So the first decent buck that walks out, I'm taking a crack at him. I pulled this trigger and normally I would say I was in disbelief, but I had this voice in my head going, I told you so, I told you so. You never, ever, ever shoot an unproven gun at a deer. Then again, I could have just flat out pulled my shot and missed. That is well within the realm of possibility. <laughs> That's what you get, man. We talked about it this morning. That's what you get for shooting somebody else's gun and never shooting it before. I should've known better than that. I held right on that deer's heart, like right at the top of his heart. And I was worried it was gonna get high, that I was gonna hit high. I held like just right in his armpit. And this gun's supposed to be sighted in for 150. And it shot right underneath him. Let that be a lesson to you kids. No matter what anybody tells you, you should always shoot a weapon of any kind before you go on a hunt. So we were gonna take it out to the range that day to put a couple rounds through it and make sure I knew my hold and I knew that the weapon was zeroed the next time I went out to avoid potential disaster number two. Four inches low. No doubt. The gun is shooting the exact distance that I missed the deer by because I held it right on his heart and he just went right underneath him. I think maybe dialed in at 100, not 150. I think that's what it was. That was our mistake. Well, the next day, we're right up in the same box blind. I shot the gun. It's on point. Everything is good to go. Now all we need to do is get lucky twice and have a good buck walk out a second time. Early on, a small eight point comes across the field and then behind him is a really big bodied eight point and he's heading right out in the open where we're gonna get a shot at him. Good buck, good buck coming out of the CRP. Now, like I said, I'm not too picky on this hunt. I'm not looking for a 200 inch double drop time. I'm looking for basically anything that is three years old and older. I know that's young, but I, I don't care, man. I'm looking to crack something down. There we go, he's coming right to the hood up.
ready. Yep. And he's down, baby. He's down for the count. He, he ain't the biggest buck in the world, but buddy, we've had a three-year stretch and really a two-year stretch, if you want to be honest, in Kentucky. And I was laying something down. I'll pay the fine for the guy's service, I don't care. I loaded the smoke pole back up and I headed out to check and make sure this buck was down. I didn't shoot this other doe that came in. You guys are probably scratching your head and going, why didn't he kill that nanny that walked in there? I didn't shoot her because I have a Hoyt bow in the closet back home full of arrows that I want to use the rest of the week and I want to kill all the does I can with my Hoyt. This is the body on the beard, bro. Look at the size of that beard, man. Perfect shot, too, right there. Right behind the front shoulder. Look at that stud. <laughs> Look at the body on that deer, man. That is unreal. He's got to be 280, man. That, uh, 250 at least. That is a huge, huge deer. Look at that rack, too. Pretty white rack. <laughs> That's cool, ain't it, man? I've always had a very short, limited time to hunt here for some reason, just the way the schedule always worked out or something. It's been hot weather, full moon, something. I've only really hunted this place two weeks. So each year I've hunted it a week and uh, just never got lucky. Um, I've been here two days and I've already shot at two deer <laughs> and I got this one. I can't wait to show Richie and Tevis and Hannah and everybody back at the lodge, man. We're gonna go grab the ranger I pulled it up to the box blind. We're gonna go pull the ranger around here and get this dude loaded up and get him out of here. But look at the size of that deer. Look at the neck on that rascal, man. Well, after we got done celebrating a little bit, we went and got the ranger EV that we parked right beside the stand, really. And we drove up and loaded up this buck and headed on back to the house. Wow. Yes, sir, buddy. That is awesome, dude. Yeah. Yes, sir. A Roman nose oh, on yeah. him. He's a mature deer, and if you watch, I mean, if you look at his body, his guts out. You saw those pictures I sent you. Oh, he's a hand. His neck is like that. Good body. And a lot of these deer around here are like this. Yeah. yeah. It's the mineral, it's all the food sources. Sure. I mean, we put out over a million pounds of corn last year. Sure. That's a lot of corn. You can't do anything but put body weight on them like that. That's right. I was so excited to have my first Kentucky buck. My tag was punched for the first time in really three hunts. And this didn't take long at all. It's only day number two, and we've got the rest of the week to do some doe patrol. Well, that next evening we went to a spot and we were gonna punch our doe tag this evening because we had a nice Antler King food plot. We've been getting a lot of trail camera pictures off this spot. The bad thing about it was is, is a 190 or a 160 or something is probably gonna walk out. So I'm gonna kill the first doe I see. Well, it's our last night here in Kentucky. We're gonna see if we can't whack a doe. Shot a buck down a muzzleloader. <clears throat> now we're back here on this little alfalfa and clover plot. Hopefully we're gonna let the deer come past us. The wind's kind of hitting me like this sort of quarter into the field a little bit. Like I said, it's really windy, but uh, I brought some sweet apple intensity from Antler King and I sprinkled that around so the deer can maybe smell it. I had a buck come in the other night and smelled the uh, tracking fuel that we put down and that joker turned on a dime, man. As soon as he got where he could smell it, he ran right to it. It was awesome. For everybody hating on us right now, it's obvious that we're baiting deer. We're using corn and end game and everything that's in our disposal to get these deer into a range that's effective for whatever weapon we're using. So for all you haters out there, here's a public service announcement from Carl Childress. I reckon what you won't know is why them red arrow boys are baiting. Mm -hmm. Reckon they're doing it because it's legal, ethical, and it's fun sometimes. Once you quit being a hater, you ain't gonna beat us. Might as well join us. Or you can sit out there on your high horse. I don't reckon you're gonna do no harm to anybody out there.
sticks and stones and whatnot. Mm -hmm. This has been a public service announcement from Carl Childress. It's crazy the way that we were set up in this tree stand. We had deer all under us and we had some bucks come in behind us. We had a crazy night of hunting and the, and the field filled up right at last light. But with the way these deer were coming in for a little while, it was gonna be hard to get a shot on them. And then finally this one doe comes in and turns broadside. Here come that doe mm, to that hater dust. She wanted some of it. I can't let talk her out of it. I would be celebrating right now, but we got more deer in the field. I want to well, we just got down at the tree stand, shot a doe. My arrow's right there. And uh, we heard a crash just in here. Let's go check this area out, see what we got. Well, the deer ran off to the power line and we thought we heard a crash, but I wanted to go back to the house and get Tevis's two oldest boys to help me do some deer tracking. Well, I got the A squad with me, the tracking team. Boys, I'll tell the people real quick what your name is. My name's Michael McCauley. My name's Michael McCauley. And how many things you killed? I killed 30 rabbits. Rat, man, that's a lot of rabbits. What about you? I killed lots. The turkeys, hogs, I killed rabbits, squirrels, possums, coons. Hey, Dave. These boys right here can blood trail a deer. I reckon if you grow up with seeing that many dead deer and that many clients killing deer and blood trails, and they hunt for themselves and they could do some blood trailing now. I didn't barely have to do anything. They were just like little hound dogs all up through the woods. Look at that big old nanny, boys. Thank y'all for helping me find her. That was awesome. I have an idea. Let's flip her over and see where it came out. Yeah, perfect. That was perfect, boys. Good job finding that deer, man. Good job, buddy. Well, let's go get that possum. Yeah. yeah. Go shoot him? Let's go shoot that possum. Make sure it's legal. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look it up on my phone, then we're gonna go shoot <laughs> If it's legal, we're gonna make sure it's legal. Hey, look, me and Kentucky might have had a rough past, but now we go together like bourbon whiskey and cockfighting. Like poker and Vienna sausage. Like Instagram and girls who can't hunt. We go together like a hot salad and cold pizza. We go together like Jim Shockey and neckerchiefs. We go together like Donald Trump and winning. There you go.